In this video, we are going to take some time and talk a little bit about the basics of 3D printing. So before we start really diving into how 3D printing works, um, I think it's important to understand how 3D printing is different from other manufacturing processes. So when we talk about manufacturing, we're talking about how it is we actually make stuff. So it used to be that hundreds and thousands of years ago, we were making pretty much everything by hand. And over the course of human history, we develop different tools that can help to facilitate manufacturing, make it easier for us to make new stuff. We created different machines that can help to help us to make more stuff, make stuff more quickly. We've come up with new processes like the assembly line to help streamline the steps for making new stuff so that we can do things more quickly. Um, and recently, we've, over the past, you know, 50, 100 years, there have been a lot of developments in technology, right, where we have um, all kinds of automated machines that can really function once they're built and designed, they can do a lot without any humans managing them, which is pretty cool. Um, a lot of these manufacturing processes, and specifically if you look at the two images on the right, a lot of manufacturing processes start off with um, a person or a machine that is beginning with a, a big chunk of raw material. Maybe it's a big chunk of wood or plastic or metal. And what that person or machine does to make something new is they remove extra material um, and they carve out that original hunk of raw material until you have something new. So like, for example, you can see the woman is drilling holes in what looks like maybe a piece of metal. Um, and so she is creating something new by removing excess material. This is the opposite of 3D printing. So when we're 3D printing, we are doing something called additive manufacturing. So we're actually starting with nothing. And little by little, we're taking new materials and we're combining new materials with what we already had in an additive way until we have a finished product. Right? And specifically with 3D printing, most often we're using plastic as our additive material, um, but we start off with a, th a digital 3D model and we're adding material one very, very thin layer at a time, starting from the bottom, building from the bottom up. So we add a layer, we add a layer, we add a layer, and eventually we have a new object. So how that works, how the process starts, uh, before you can print something, you have to either make or find a digital design. Um, there are websites that where people publish designs that they've already made that they're sharing for others to use. Uh, there are also several different applications that you can use to create your own design. So things like SketchUp, Blender, Tinkercad, AutoCAD, Maya 3DS, there's a bunch out there. Once your model is completed, once you have finished designing it, there is also computer software that takes your 3D design um, and it performs some calculations and slices it up so that the printer knows what each individual layer will look like. It basically takes the one figure you designed and breaks it up into lots of little layers. And so when, when we use the term slice a lot when we're talking about 3D printing, and a slice is just a way to refer to a, a layer of something. So in 3D printing, it's this thin horizontal layer that we print out one at a time. So the computer essentially just chops up your design into lots of little layers. And then that information is sent to your printer and once your printer knows exactly what each layer should look like, it can go out, print one layer on top of another, on top of another, until you have a 3D object. 
All right, and how that printing process actually works. So once all this information, this digital information has been sent to the printer, um, you're usually, and it might vary a little bit where some of these items are depending on the model of your printer. Somewhere you're gonna have a spool of plastic that probably looks like this red spool. So it's gonna be really thin plastic that looks almost kind of like string. Um, some types of plastic are more flexible some are a little stiffer, uh, but they will usually be spooled up around like this. And as the printer is working, it will slowly unwind that spool as it pulls more plastic to use, right? So we refer to the plastic as the filament, all right? And what happens with the filament is that it is pulled to a very, a very small, a very precise tip known as the extruder. The extruder is very, very hot. So if you think about plastic, when plastic is it, plastic is usually at room temperature um, and you can't really mold plastic at this temperature. So for us to be able to take plastic and mold it into different shapes to print these really thin layers, we actually have to melt it. So this one part of the 3D printer gets very, very, very hot. You do not want to touch it if your printer is on, but it will melt very small amounts of the plastic, print them out at a very precise location, and then move around in the printing space, depositing more and more plastic until it's built up the object that you're trying to create. And where it's actually depositing all this plastic, there is a special build plate um, on your 3D printer. Um, it's really important for that build plate to be level, um, but this is actually where your object will end up after printing has finished, okay? While 3D printing is really cool, I think some of the videos out there make it look a little easier than it might be. So there are a few things to keep in mind to help your prints turn out more successfully um, so that you don't end up something like this with, uh, end up with something like this dragon that didn't turn out so well, all right? So one thing that you wanna do, um, that build plate, or sometimes known as the, the bed, you wanna make sure that when you start printing, the first layer is very, very important. You wanna make sure that first layer is in the right spot and that it's, it's stuck kind of firmly to that build plate uh, because if that first layer moves around, it will throw off everything that's supposed to go on top of it. So a few things that you can do, there are a few different materials out there that are suggested to help make your build plate a little more adhesive. Again, you don't want things permanently stuck to it. You just don't want them to move around while it's printing. Um, so a lot of people will use painter's tape, just put a layer of tape over your build plate, makes it easy to, to remove things also when you're finished. Uh, putting a thin layer of glue with a glue stick can also help. I've seen People claim that Jello is helpful too. I've never tried that, but it could be a fun experiment to try, all right? So you wanna make sure that's, that's level, a little bit sticky, ready to go. Um, you wanna avoid in your design overhangs. So with additive manufacturing, with 3D printing, you're printing one layer on top of another. Unfortunately, 3D printers cannot print on too thin air, right? If you have something higher up in your design off the ground, it needs some type of support underneath it. All right, so you have to be very, very careful, um, and this can sometimes cause problems in design when you have something that's hanging over off to the side, off to the front or back with no support underneath it. Um, and also there's different settings in your 3D printer you can mess with to help improve the quality of your prints. Typically, if your 3D printer, if you slow the speed down, it will come out a little bit nicer. Um, again, you're gonna have to wait longer, but the final result will be nice. Um, and if you're looking for higher quality, um, so you can actually with pretty much all printers specify for each individual layer that's being printed, you can specify how thick you want that layer to be. 
So if you want higher quality items, you want to decrease those layers. The thinner the layer is, the harder it will be able to see individual layers. You'll have a smoother design. Uh, now this does take longer. So if you're just prototyping something, you want something done really quick, thicker layer heights will print a little bit faster. So a few things to keep in mind. Um, unfortunately, as of today, uh, a lot of 3D prints will take several hours, if not, if it's a really big print, it could take even a day or longer, right? Um, researchers are working on technologies to help make 3D printing faster, but it's always a good idea to check before you start a print, hey, how long is this actually going to take? Uh, do I want to change anything about my design? Um, and although 3D printing, we usually think of printing with plastic when we think of 3D printing, we can actually print with lots of different substances. So there are some experimental printers out there that are using human cells to print body organs, which could have really cool implications in the medical industry. There are 3D printers that take different types of food um, and create different things with them. Um, with plastic and with metal, there are 3D printers that can do things like print prosthetics for amputees. Um, and I've even seen 3D printers that use cement to print houses. So really, really big 3D printers. Uh, but there are lots of cool applications to them. So what are the possibilities with 3D printing? I think as we begin to utilize more and more materials, um, there's a lot we can do with 3D printing. 3D printing um, can reduce the cost of making custom items that at one point in time you had to you know, send a special order to some special company. It might have been really expensive. 3D printers allow us to make custom objects in our own home, um, which is really cool. So there are a lot of great possibilities. So to sum everything up, Remember, 3D printing is an additive process. So we are taking digital models, chopping them up, splicing them up into layers, and printing those layers out one on top of the other. Most 3D printers that are available commercially use a plastic filament, but there are some specialized machines that can print with other materials. Um, and as more and more people start to work with 3D printers, 3D design technologies. There are more and more things that we're able to print. And I think over the next five, 10, 20 years, we're gonna see some really cool things come out of this industry.